come from no shape, form, or fashion tonight. Oh God, we came from what reason or what reason? Hallelujah. Hallelujah to our pastor, Pastor Tangela Williams. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah
Pastor Ty Tyrone Williams in his absence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And for the speaker of the hour. Hallelujah. Our very own Pastor Jen. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. We give honor. I'm so sorry to Mother Carter. Hallelujah. I love you. I love you. I love you. Hallelujah. And to my sister, Pastor L. Evangelist Alicia Phillips, hallelujah, hallelujah, I give honor to each and every one of you in your respective places, hallelujah. We stand, hallelujah, to do a little praise and worship, hallelujah. A little praise and worship, hallelujah. We're going to do this the way God say do it. So I need my team to come on up, y'all, come on up, let's do this praise and worship song. All right now. Y'all ain't this what God got it in you. He said make a joyful noise, that's what we're going to do. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about y'all, but this atmosphere is sick. The Spirit of God is sick off of here. That's the anointing of God in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I promise God, every time I come into a building, hallelujah, I was going to pray through like it was my last time. Hallelujah. I was going to sweat out some stuff. Hallelujah. Because he's been so good.
Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. The spirit is my nature. We ask you, we ask you. We ask you. We have a single son. You know it's so important to be with God. To get uh -huh. out into the holy of holiness. I see his face. Yeah. I know that I have a right. Come on, come on. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And while I'm just seeking him, yes, Lord. Ah. I ask him for what I need. Yes, yes, I have. And I see this. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Oh, oh yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Hey, Lord, I should have you. Thank you, Lord. Three, Let three. it rain. Oh, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, Thank you, Jesus. Let it rain. Oh, yes, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Open.
telling me to stay right here. Stay right here. Don't move, don't move, don't move. Hallelujah. 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 God delivered you from something. He brought you out of something. He kept you. God Goodness and mercy shall follow me. God, 
the speaker for the hour, none other than Pastor Janet Williams. Amen. 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 Lord, we know all the time not what to pray. 
but have your way, O God, in this place. Rain on us in this place, O God. Let your presence reign in this place, O God. Thank you, Lord, for the time of refreshing, O God. Thank you for allowing us to come into your house just one more time, O God. Lord, I just thank you, Father God, for health, life, and strength, O God. Father God, I just thank you, Lord. I just thank you, Lord. I just thank you, Lord. If I had a thousand tongues, I couldn't thank you enough, O God, but I give you praise on this day, O God, for what you're doing in this hour, O God. Father God, we thank you, O God, for your word, O God. We thank you, O God, for your son, O God, for that he died, O God, for the remission of our sins, O God. And we give you glory. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. 
Now the New International Version reads, Repent, then, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of, re of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed for you, yeah. even right. Jesus. Yeah. When God brought about this revival, and sometimes we use the word revival kind of lightly. Yeah. Sometimes we take it lightly. Sometimes you look at it as another church service. Yes, yes. Come on now. Thank you, Lord. When I go back to revival, it means to awake, revive. Yes. Bring back alive. Yes. Amen. Which is resuscitation. Yes. And I always go through this in each revival that I do, that I'm asked to do, about resuscitation. Meaning some of us are on the verge of flatline. All right. All right. Come on. All right. And you can tell when we're on the verge of flatlining because we don't pray the way we used to. We don't praise the way we used to. We don't worship the way we used to. Now everything else seems to have our time and our attention and our focus. But God. So this song. May the heart and soul say yes. You know, sometimes you have to, you know, married couples renew their vows. After so long, they've been married, even though they got used to each other and everything. But God requires us to want to be renewed. He's going to want us to be refreshed. Right? So I asked y'all, and I saw a mother up here, and she wanted, she said, Is God going to be pleased with the praise you got? Okay? But in order to be refreshed, it will call us to get in his presence. Yes. And you can't get in his presence if you think you're going to do it the same way you did it last year. Amen. Oh, amen. Huh? Oh, amen. We can't come in here and do church as usual amen. again amen. and again and again. And I would hate to see all these people that go to church, these church folk, hate to see all these church folk thinking they got it right and got it together and end up going to hell straight from the church. See, the church don't even want to talk about hell. Amen. Church don't even want to say that hell is a real place. Huh? And if we don't get it right with God in hell, we will live in our Huh? See, in order to deal with reviving us in a resuscitation, right? You gotta want it. Right? You gotta let him know. You gotta notify him that you want it. I talk about the DNR that they have. You know, you go to the hospital, they have a DNR. You can have a DNR. Do not resuscitate. Don't let them put a DNR on you. Don't let them put a DNR on you. This thing was so heavy. It was heavy. It's heavy. Death is heavy. Death is heavy. See, in order for you to revive something,
something, you already you gotta deal with the dead. Hallelujah, Jesus. Death is heavy. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, I used to, I don't know, I was little, I used to be afraid of dead people. Right? I used to be afraid of funeral homes and everything and anything that's dead. Now I'm afraid of dead church. Oh, you know. If you walk in a church and you serve a living God, you can walk in a church and you can see the dead among you. Not only does it have a look, it has a stench. We get made up and we come and sit in the pews, we come and sit in the pulpits, and we be dead. That's why the word it says in Acts 3, 19 and 20. Repent! Yes. People don't like that word. People don't like that word. People don't like that word. Repent. But repent is a beautiful word. Amen. Yes. Because repent offers hope. Yes. Repent yes. offers a second chance. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Repent gets God's attention. Yes. Yes. Come on. Come on God continues to ask us the same things. And he keeps continuing to give us the same instructions. The word says repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. That times of refreshing may come from the Lord. That's in Acts 3, 19 and 20. It reminds me of 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and here it goes again, and turn. from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land a lot of people are upset and consumed by everything that they're seeing and hearing on the news of everything that's going on in the world but it is written yes It is written. These days were already foretold in the word of God. Yes. And these last days. Yes. But he gave direction. Come on, come on. He gave direction to you. He gave direction to you. Yes. He gave direction to you. You, you, you. It's my people. So he gave a solution to every problem. Yes, yes, yes. Huh? We're so worried about what's going on, but yet we have yet to activate what we was charged to do. Come on. Right? Because we're in this world. We're not of this world. Amen. So because we're in it and we're not of it, that means that we are the ones that have effect on it. Yes, yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah, come, yeah, on yeah. come on, come on. So with my people, Jesus, well, Lord, huh? Lord. And there's this thing that he says will humble themselves. Because right. we're dealing with sin. Yeah. Come on, yeah. And sin will keep us from yeah. becoming humble. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. sin is an act of rebellion. Come on, come on. Mm -hmm. And see, you know when you're rebellious, you're tough. Mm. Huh? When you're rebellious, and when you know you're rebellious, mm. ain't nothing finna turn you from doing what you want to do. Come on, come on. Yeah, come on. Yeah, huh? yeah. When you're rebellious,
rebel, you're going to do what you want to do, how you want to do it, and when you want to do it, and can't nobody tell you nothing. Oh my God. Come on, Pastor. Rebellion. Jesus, come on. Rebellion. And even when the rebellion and the things that you're doing, even when it's killing you, you still gotta go through with it. Even when it's killing you and everybody around you is destroying relationships, it's breaking up your home, it's ruining your family. Alright. Jesus. Jesus. You still my God, my God, my God, oh my God. Don't harm yourself. Yeah. Jesus. So that's why he, he knew that was important. See, because the only way that you was going to get it right is you have to become humble. Yes, yes. Hmm? He said if they were humble themselves yes, yes. and pray. Right. Uh huh. Come on, Because this, this is, this is the, the thing about prayer. Yeah. Man, you know, on this altar. That's a position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. See, when we stand in, because we think we're standing on our own, yeah. he says, if they will humble themselves yeah. and pray. Right. That means that you, if to pray, that means you look into somebody outside of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. If they will humble themselves and pray. Because sometimes we can become a God unto ourselves. Oh, come on, oh my God. Mm -hmm. So then, mm -hmm. therefore, when you become a God unto yourself, you don't need God. You need the house that you live in, you get it. You think the car that you drive, you got it. You think that every, oh, this is my church, this is my house, this is my clothes, this is my, 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 my. And friends, and seek thy face. You know why you have to seek his face? This is, I, 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 I was into this today and I was like blown away about this word. The reason you have to seek his face is because remember, God can't look upon sin. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. So you gotta get. His attention. Come on now. Because you got to seek his face because he's this way. Mm -hmm. Come on. Because you will deal in your flesh. All right. Come on. Come on. You're dealing in your yes. sin and your mess. Yes. Yes. So you will cause you to have to seek him. Yes. That's why the word says seek him while he still may be found. Because see, one day when you decide it's time for you to humble yourself and seek him, he can't no longer be found. Oh, come on. Oh, my. Revival. Revival. We're going to have these revivals and these times of refreshing because the refreshing comes when you seek him. Yes. The refreshing comes when you get into his presence. Hmm? We have the opportunity to be refreshed daily. Why? Because he every day he offers us brand new mercy. And because of those brand new mercies, we're able to be refreshed daily. But we don't get refreshed daily because we don't seek him daily. Oh my God. Oh my God. We're not seeking his presence daily. So he gave me this. And I was like, wow. Because God always, his, his word just always lines up. So he don't ever, if you just read this one book, guess what? If you didn't, if you kill, he's going to always go ahead and confirm his word somewhere else. He, re, he continues to reconfirm his word. You might, just if you might, you might, you won't, he's making sure that you're not going to miss it. Amen. Whether you started in the Old Testament or the New Testament, that's why what's in the Old Testament will be repeated in the New Testament. Hmm? Because the Old Testament was prophesying of things to come. Hmm? So I had, he gave me Acts. That's 3, 19 and 20. 
the times of refreshing. And when he got to this scripture, this particular scripture, that was Peter. And Peter had just performed a miracle with the lame man. Let me see you see this one. Remember that? Yes. The lame man that was sitting. And Peter says to him, silver and gold, have I not? Yes. Huh? Yes. And that's us. That's us. See, because sometimes we be so focused on the silver and gold. We'll be so focused on the silver and gold, no matter what our condition, we just think if we got some silver and gold, I'll be all right for the day. Huh? But God wants to do a bigger thing. Hmm? A bigger thing. We be so focused on money, we'll go crazy, give me uh, all these jobs, going to work, we're trying to possess everything. So material minded. When God is trying to do a thing in these bodies of ours. Hmm? When he's trying to heal us. He said, this is almost like you said, you sitting here. And I got something even better than silver and gold. Because sometimes if he could just touch us and heal us, right? We're able to get more silver and gold than we could have ever imagined. Yes, God. Yes, God. I remember talking to this woman in 11 years. And this is, I, I, 11 years she had been sitting waiting on disability to be approved for 11 years and I said imagine if you would have been asking God for your heal yeah. in that time yeah. huh? I said just think about it I said Go, okay if you've been waiting 11 years for social security and you're only maybe in your 30s Social Security ain't gonna pay you that much because you ain't paid nothing into it. So you mean to tell me that you're gonna sit around and settle for seven hundred dollars, some dollars, eight hundred dollars a month when God has more for you? But that's us. That's us in the physical and in the spiritual. Come huh? on, we put limits on God. So I was asking this. I said, let me encourage you. Let me pray for you. See, this is why the church got to get right. See, we can't continue to fall into these same trappings and then expect to help somebody else. Come on now, man. We got to start thinking on a higher level, All right. on a different plane. We got to start believing what God says Amen. we are. Yes. Huh? How we heirs. Y'all always want to move there. Come on, come on, come on. How are we heirs? Yet we live in a spirit of lack. Yeah. How are we heirs and we live in a spirit of poverty? Yeah. And I'm trying to tell the church, and this is part of revival. Yeah. Huh? Because everything will happen is because everything in our life will become dead. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Our finances are dead. Yeah. You know what I mean? Our, we have spiritual spiritual droughts. Come on, come on. Come on. Right? Wow. We have mental deficits yeah, 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 in our yeah, life. Yeah. We have emotional yeah. retardation. Yeah, yeah. Revival. Renew. 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 He said to repent. And I want y'all to get this. Repent. Repentance is viewing one's actions and feeling contrition or regret for past wrongs. Which is accompanied by commitment to and actual actions that show and prove a change for the better. Not that lying, cheating spouse 
that says, oh, I ain't gonna do it no more. Because that's who we are, because he said he come back for a bride. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But we that lying, cheating, sneaky, deceptive spouse. That keep saying, I ain't gonna do it no more. Uh -huh. Just give me another chance. Yes. Let me back in the house, baby. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Come on. Because he said that he was coming back for a church, which is his bride, yes. without a spot or a wrinkle. Yes. Yes. You need an iron, girl. Oh, oh my goodness. Because it's wrinkled. We need some starch to iron out some of them things. We need some shout out for them stains. Come on, come on now. For them spots. For them blemishes. Maybe throw in some OxyClean or that good old time. Huh? Revival. This is revival. Because see, revival sometimes is the only time we're gonna get some truth. That's right. Amen. That's right. Because see, sometimes the pastors don't want to make you mad because you, you might leave and you might not come. Come on, come on. Huh? You might you might take your time to Yes, come on. Keep them. That's right. Refresh. The fresh means to give new strength yes, Lord. or energy to reinvigorate. Renew. Give fresh life or strength yes. to revive. Yes. Restore. Repair. Fix. Mend. Refurbish. Recondition. Yes. Rehabilitate. And rebuild. Uh -huh. oh, come on. Come on. I want you to remember restore. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I want you to remember refill. Refill yes. is become full again. Yes, yes. Replenished. And I want to tell you about that feeling being filled. In Acts chapter 2, it says, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. Come on. You think you got to, you come together and we come together in church and we're one, one accord? Mm -mm. Let me tell you how one accord happens. You got to want God. You gotta want God for yourself. Yes. You gotta want God for yourself. You, we just happen to be in the same place at the same time, and we are all wanting the same thing. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. But it starts with you. Amen. And people quickly say, "Oh, the church would just get on one accord." No, baby. <laughs> you. Because you're the first church, right? Amen. Amen. You. Jesus, come on. You. So that when, when you come into the place and we all got one goal, and that's to lift God up yeah. and make his name great. Yeah. Hallelujah. Then we begin to praise and we begin to cry out unto God. And see, when you begin to cry out, see, this is why I want to make it special. I love the word. I love the word. I love the word. See, this is how you know, right? If you wasn't sure, this is not how you're going to know. He says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house. Thank you, Lord. It filled all the house where they were sitting. Uh -huh. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each 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 that he said he said all of them he said each come on come on each one each one each one that means each one already came with something 
Each one. Thank you. It filled, it sat upon each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You know why it's personal? Because they began to speak with other tongues. So now you don't know what I'm talking about. And I don't know what you're talking about. We ain't speaking the same language. So we didn't get together and plan this. It wasn't pig Latin. So you didn't understand what I was saying. And I didn't understand what you were saying. But God. Revival is a personal thing. See, we have to be revived so the church can be revived. And when the church gets revived, guess what? We got to move this outside because see, a revival is supposed to not just affect those in the church. It's supposed to affect everything that's outside of them doors. We're supposed to be affecting change in the community. See, the trick the schools is getting shot up because where's the praying mom? Come on now. Now everybody remember today that I need to be praying for my children before my children go out. You should have been praying for your children. Saying, oh, if the if the if they begin to change legislation in the land, it has nothing to do with legislation. First of all, I re remember the word of God says the government is upon his shoulders. Come on now. Come on. Why do you think and continue to act like the man has more power than God? Come on. Why do you continue to forget that we serve a sovereign God? Why do you why do you forget that? It's why do you continue to blame the enemy for everything? Because if you're going to blame the enemy, then you start looking at yourself because you continue to live in sin. You continue to serve that master that is not a God. Come on, come on. So you might as well be the one carrying the gun. Come on now, Jesus. Yeah. We're carrying the gun. We loaded them bullets, huh? Because that was somebody's child that was needing prayer a long time ago. Where was the church? We're so reactive. Instead of being proactive, we quick to let the deacon sing a charge to keep our have and a God to glorify. And you ain't never obeyed the charge not one time. Help us. Come on now. Because this whole word is our charge. These are our walking instructions, our marching instructions. How we well, how we well, how we go into this world, the light that we're supposed to be. Come on, come on. Yeah. yeah. But we live in a cage. And you can't even tell us from the world. The word says the captives will be made free. Yes. We the captives. Yes. Yes. He's been trying to make us free. And if we don't get free, we can't help nobody else get free. Come on now. Yeah. This is still revival. Yes. Come on. Amen. Thank this you, is Lord. still revival. It's repent. That means turn. Amen. Turn from your wicked ways. And I remember I said we remember restore and refill, right? It says uh, Jeremiah 2 and 12. I ran across this scripture and I was like, wow. He's always talking to the church. He's always been talking to his people. Yes. He says, my people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me. That's God. 
my people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water. And they have dug their own cisterns. My goodness. Broken right. cisterns mm, right. that cannot hold water. Oh my God. Oh, mm. Mm. Let's see. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. That means that's because we continue to think that we can do stuff our way. Come on now. Come on. That's why he said he don't dwell in a house built by man's hands. Come on, come on, come on. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He don't, he don't dwell there. He don't dwell there. That's why we building our own cistern, and that's why we leaking everywhere. Yeah. We leaking everywhere. We walking and leaking. We already got the path out. Huh? Come on, now. That's why we need a refreshing. Yes, Lord. But we can't get refreshed until we get restored. Come on, yes. come on, come on. Huh? Yes. We gotta repent. We gotta realize in, in a mint there's a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we don't wanna admit that we live in with sin. Yeah. Because sin, we might not be living in the sin we used to live come in. Come on, but come on. Because we done got delivered from come some on, sin on, or what we thought was a major sin, we still living in sin. Come on, come on. And sometimes we seem to forget what sin is. Mm. You know why we forget what sin is? Sin is? Because the church don't preach about sin. My God. Oh, my. The church stop talking about sin. So how can you repent of something you don't even know you're doing? Hmm? So I came to talk to you about sin real quick. And so, because I want, because this is a personal thing, I don't want to point out nobody's sin, but it's for you to recognize it for yourself. Because part of that refreshing and that praying, daily praying, is daily examination. Come on, come on. So here we go. We all, we done heard of the seven, seven deadly sins, right? The seven deadly sins are lust, gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, Pride, yeah. mm -hmm. and we know that that you know sometimes we don't talk about all of them. We don't need to, but I just real quick want to talk about gluttony, gluttony, because the church is living in a state of gluttony, right? Because now we feel the more money we have, the better we can eat. Hmm? Right? We 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 tear up. Some food. Right? But that's a deadly Amen. sin. Amen. Right? You know why it's a deadly You know why that sin is so bad? Because it says that it can be cured. See, because for every sin, God has a grace and a mercy for it. For instance, or the Holy Spirit, the, the characteristics of the Holy Spirit are cures for sin. Right? So it says that for gluttony, the cure for gluttony is temperance. Temperance cures gluttony by implanting the desire to be healthy, therefore making one fit to serve others. See how that is? See, God, God fixes us so we can extend to others. The whole purpose of us is for others. Yes. Huh? Yes. So that's why it's so that's why it's almost comical to God that we spend so much time thinking that everything we do is for us yes. and about us. But remember what the greatest commandment was. Do y'all remember what the greatest commandment was? To love God with all thy heart. To love thy God with all thy heart, right? And then he told us to do something else. Love our neighbors. Love our neighbors as us ourselves. So how can you be loving yourself, but the only thing you're doing is trying to uh, one up your neighbor? Come on. Huh? Come on. You, 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 you crabs in a barrel. So how are you come on, come on, come loving yourself? So that means if I buy a car, I'm going to make sure my neighbor get a car too. Amen. Huh? And if I get a house, come move in this house with me or come on and let me help you get this house 
house next door. Come on, come on now, come on, come on. Huh? But we forget that. Because we're so selfish, so self-centered. That's what God don't want us looking like the world. That's what the world is. Yes. The world is idolaters. And you know that you can become your own idol? Yeah, but my God. Amen. I'm talking about sin. Because yes. I want you to know what you're repenting of, yes. right? Yes. So we said lust, gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, pride. There is, there is, those are the same, seven deadly sins. You don't need to envy nobody. You know what cures envy? The word of God says kindness cures envy by placing the desire to help others above yeah. the need yeah. to supersede them. Yeah. You know what helps pride? It says humility cures pride by removing one's ego and boastfulness, therefore allowing the attitude of service. Come on, church. And it says sin falls in two categories. The sin of omission. This is when we do not do what God commands us to do. And then the sin of commission. This is when we do what God has commanded us not to do. The three main ways that people sin is our thoughts, our words, and our deeds. Yeah. Huh? This is sin. And I want you to know, if we don't understand sin, if we don't repent, if we don't repent and get it right, we can't see God. Amen. Amen. It says, here's the sin. I'm going to list some sins. And this is, and mind you, I'm listing sins, but every, all these sins are forgivable. Amen. Huh? Amen. He just asking for us to repent. Amen. All of these sins are forgivable. Because he paid the price. Hallelujah. But if you don't know it, you don't know to repent. And some people are being tormented by some things that they could have just repented of. My God. Mm. And he would have wiped it out. Amen. He would have blotted it all away. Because he's waiting to do that. So we have, and people don't want to hear it, but I'm gonna, I got to talk about sin because they got to know. Abortion. Not abstaining from all appearances of evil. Accusing. Not acknowledging our not acknowledging your sin is a sin. My Adultery. Afraid of people or circumstances. Some people are living with in their houses because they're so afraid to come around people. They're living in sin. Because it's a spirit, you better understand. A lot of the sins are, are spirits yeah, that we're struggling and dealing with. And when we begin to understand them and recognize them, we can get healed from them. Amen. Yes, yes, Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Afraid to confess Jesus to people. You mean you're walking around and keeping Jesus to yourself, but you say he's your savior, and that's, that's who you're serving, and that's who you love it? But we're afraid to confess Jesus. Unjustified anger, wrath. You know, there's people that's walking around raging. They call them raging lunatics. Yeah. And, it's, and that's because that's another spirit. You, every little thing sets them off. Everything is a major explosion of anger. The word of God says anger, sin not. Yeah. Anger with your brother. You can't be sitting here mad with your brother and sister and not getting it right. The word already tells us that in Matthew 5, 22. Being anxious is a sin. Why? Because anxious is us trying to control things within ourselves. Yes. Not knowing that once we get into God, see, when we end, God begins. Yes. Where we end. When we stop trying to fix it, when we stop worrying about it, when we stop obsessing about it, then God can work. Amen. But if you hold it on your and keep it and become anxious about it, you're sinning. Because that means you don't trust God. Arguing. So we, I, I, I used to be a person that loved to argue. And I really, and I didn't know. But when God began to change and, the, and then the fruit of the Spirit began working within me, 
those things began to change. So if you argue in your home, and you argue, you argue negative, that's a sin. That's a sin. Arrogance, swelling, pride. That's a sin. A shame. Hiding your light for Jesus. We were created for a purpose. And when we're not living in the purpose in which we were created, we're living in sin. He said, because if you are ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. Hmm? For somebody don't know that's a sin. Somebody don't know that's something they need to repent of. I'm going to list them because see, God wants, wants this thing to be done tonight. Yes. He wants us to repent tonight. He wants us to be over tonight. He wants to refresh us tonight. Hallelujah. A sin is being ashamed of Jesus and his words. Assault is a sin. Astrology is a sin. Vain babbling is a sin. Backbiting is a sin. Refusing to be baptized is a sin. Baptized before believing in Jesus is a sin. Not believing in the name of his son, Jesus Christ. Bitterness is a sin. Blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Not blessing them that curse you. Not blessing them which persecute you. A person that leads the blind astray, eating blood, boasting as is evil, being against a child of God. Y'all better play, stop playing with God's children. Being against a child of God, causing a child to sin, deceiving a child of God. Not my anointing. Despising one of God's children is the same as despising God. Enticing a child to turn. Enticing a child through their lust and desires. Hindering, a be hindering or beating a child of God's servant. Judging God's servants. Laying in wait to accuse someone. You know some accusers. <laughs> some accusers of the brethren. <laughs> That's sinful. <laughs> Not feeding children of God who are hungry. Not clothing children of God that have needs. Not receiving a child of God sent by God. That's me right there. Not receiving a child of God sent by God. See, God sends people in your life. And when they'll get there, you won't even receive what they got. And you'll miss or mess around and miss your blessing. And then mess around and then end up in trouble with God. Because God sent them there to help you. Sometimes that's why a lot of times we're stuck in situations. Because God sent us to help. But we wouldn't receive. You, you even cried out to God. Praying to God. Well, Lord, when are you going to send me an answer? And then he sends somebody with the answer. You don't even want it. Repent. Repent. Get it right. Repent. 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 Not taking in a homeless child of God. Not visiting children of God who are sick. Not visiting the children of God in prisons. Offending a child of God. Persecuting a child of God. Putting stumbling blocks in the path of God's children. Refusing to hear God's servants, speaking against God's children, smiting God's children. I just read to you 50 cents. And that's not counting the seven, so that's 57. This is revival. Amen. So he's asking us to repent. So this is self-evaluation. Yes. Repent. And I just gave you a definition of repent. Is repentance is revealing one's actions and feeling contrition 
or regret for past wrongs, which is accompanied by commitment to and actual actions that show and prove a change for the better. Hmm? So the word of God once again says, repent then and turn to God that your sins may be wiped out. And I'm going to end with this. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. See, that's why I read the sins. I read the sins because that word says acknowledge. I acknowledge my trans. You can't come to him talk about Lord, I repent, and you have not acknowledged your transgressions. Come on, come on. Come on. That's like you know how the people apologize and they say, Well, I'm sorry if I did anything to get me mad. You know exactly what you did. Come on now. You know exactly what you said. Come on, come on, come on. And that's the half-hearted. Apology of the half-hearted repentance, because he God don't accept that as repentance. See, he want, he knows what you did, but he needs you to acknowledge what you did and confess it to him. Because see, sometimes if we don't confess it, we'll forget it. See, you've been a long on, you done hurt this person over here, you done long on and forgot that you did that right there because you never acknowledged it. And because you never acknowledged it, you never went to get it right. And because you never went to get it right, you think you own the way to glory, but guess what? For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judges. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. Oh, Jesus. Y'all yeah. didn't get that. Yeah. He desires truth in the inward parts. Why? Because we must serve him with what? Spirit. And so when that spirit is in the inward parts of us, truth got to be there too. Yeah. So it don't matter. We gotta be, that's why we got to be honest even with ourselves. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, Jesus. Behold, thy desire is truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Yes. Purge me with the hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Yes. Jesus. Oh. The bones that he has broken. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. Huh? Because sometimes we have to suffer. Yeah. Hmm? Pastor OJ preached that on Monday when I suffered just a little while. Yeah. But sometimes we are made to suffer. Because sometimes we become sin sick anyway. Right. Yeah. Huh? So then it calls those, even those broken parts of us to rejoice. Right? Because he said, because I remember I had this, I, even when God rebukes me, sometimes because the way God does rebuke sometimes, it takes a while to even notice you've been rebuked. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It takes a minute to know, like, and even think, yeah. Me. But I'm so busy still giving God the praise because as long as he's rebuking me, he's still working with me. As long as he's rebuking me, that means he ain't gave up on me. It's when he stopped. Amen. 
been broken. In my brokenness. In my brokenness. Because sin will break you. Sin will keep you broken. Huh? Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He says, uh, Purge me with his self, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Didn't I tell you he hides his face? Yeah. I told you he hides his face. So that you got to seek him. You never seen a kid, little child trying to get your attention? They don't stop. You could be doing anything else, and they be right. Mommy, mommy. You move it, and they, mommy, mommy, mommy. Yeah. Huh? That's what he's looking for. When you say, seek my face, that means you ain't gonna let go until he gets, gets back to you. I don't want to keep on crying out to you until you answer me, God. Amen. I'm going to keep until I can get your attention, until I can get you to turn and look at me. Oh, yes, God. Yes, yes, God. I'm going to seek you. Because I want your forgiveness. Yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit. Within me. Jesus. We, we dad, we're renewing. I want to be new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to be new. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even, even want to be the Jan Jan new last week. Come on now. I want to be new. I don't want that same old mess. Amen. I don't want that same old stinking thinking. Come on now. I don't want to be the one that's sitting up angry and mad and depressed and have all kinds of fears and frustrations yes. and God. That's not of God. Amen. Come on now. Amen. That is not of God. Not of God. Renew a right spirit within me. Yes. So when the right spirit comes, guess what the old spirit got to do? It's got to go. Now. It's got to go. It can't dwell in the same That's place. Not dwell there. So when he renewed the right spirit, that old spirit got evicted. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, So you can't say you repented and you still dealing with the old spirit. Come on now. You can't do it. You can't do it, y'all. You cannot do it. This is revival. Yeah, yeah. So now when you think about this as revival, they understand that you are now in the process of being resuscitated. Yes. And if that defibrillator don't really work, then you can die. Oh my. So this is a matter of life and death. Come on now. This is that's why it's a revival. Yes, God. It's a matter of life or death. Come on. See, when, when they stick out those defibrillators, that means that heart done already stopped. Yeah, all right. So that means you're already basically clinically dead. Yeah. So the only way that we can revive you is to resuscitate you. Yeah. And the only way we're going to resuscitate you is that we're going to have to place this thing straight on your heart. Yeah. Let it work on your heart. Let it work on your heart. He says, if you love me, then you'll keep my commandments. Yes. That means you're going to obey my word. And you're going to live out this word. You can't keep calling my name and saying that you're my child, yet you don't listen to me. You refuse to obey me. It says, cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Don't cast me away. Don't cast me away. I don't want to be a castaway. I don't want to be a castaway. I mean, when I, I cast, you know when that movie cast away? Yes. I don't want to be stuck. Come on now. So far away that I can't even make it back to you. 
See, this is why this revival, revival is life or death, because see, you don't know when you're going to get another opportunity. Come on, come on. Amen. Amen. We got to get it right tonight. Amen. It's a matter of life or death. Amen. Now, let me ask you a question. See, see, the time is, we look at the time, the time is getting late. If there was a surgeon and he was operating to save your life, would you be concerned at how long the surgery took? This is a, it's a, having an operation to save your life. Yes. Did you tell the, tell the doctor, well, sir, I need you to be done in an hour and a half. Come on now. Come on now. I need you to finish this thing up because I got other things to do, other places to go. And the surgeon's looking like, if you don't get this right, if I don't get this right, you won't be going nowhere. Come on. All right. You might be calling Coney or my nephew Reggie or somebody, Reggie Cannon, to come pick you up. We got to get to a place of revival. Because if you don't have time for what God has for you, then you're not going to have time for God's people that he's sending you to out there. Because it's going to require some things from you. Amen. It's going to require something like dedication. Yes. It's going to require something like patience. Huh? It's going to require something like empathy and compassion. Yes. Huh? Even when they work in your nerves, even when they oh, smell the best, even when they talking to you crazy, you're going to need something oh, to deal with them. Just yes. to say the same amount of the characteristics that God has to continue to work with you. Yes. 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 Come on. You're going to need that temperance. Yes. You're going to need that long suffering. You're going to need that humility. You're going to need those things, love and kindness. You're going to need that. Yes. You're going to need that peace. You're going to need that yes. love. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because it was love for God so loved the world yes. that he gave his own desire. For our sins. Yes. That's what he came. Yes. So that same love is that's what he's giving to us tonight when he's offering us a chance of revival. He says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors the way, and sinners shall be converted unto the... Did I just say that? Yeah. Come on. Did I just say that? Yes. How you finna teach them transgressors the way? Come on. How you finna convert somebody when you ain't trying to be converted?
with a broken spirit, you've given him to permission to deliver you. With a broken spirit, you begin to cry out. Yeah. A broken spirit is a spirit of surrender. Yeah. 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 A broken spirit says, I need the yeah. I need the yes. Every hour, I need thee. Oh, bless me now. Jesus. Huh? My Savior. Bless you now. Now you can bless me. That's why you can say, oh, bless me now. Because I need you. Bless me now. All blessings are not always called to be material. Okay. Come on, come on. Our first blessings and our gifts are spiritual. Thank you, Lord. I want all of you. I want all of you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There's a sound that he's listening for from his people. He's waiting for that cry. He says, then will I hear from heaven. See, as you seek him and cry out and turn to your wicked way, he says, then will I hear from heaven. See, remember, Jesus is our intercessor. Huh? He's our intercessor, so we can go to the Father and say, they cried out. They're crying out now, Daddy. They're crying out now. Yes. They're crying out now, Daddy. They're, they're repenting, Daddy. They want to turn this thing around. They're, they're coming back to you, oh God. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. He's our intercessor. He says, then will I hear from heaven. See, then when you hear from heaven, that's when God, he's waiting for God to say, okay. He's waiting for God to say, I hear them. He's waiting for God's approval because see, God's going to prove when he see when he hears and when he's satisfied. He says, "Then will I heal yes, yes, yes. their land?" He's talking about the world in which we live in. They don't hear their land. He's talking about your household, and then I will hold your land.
He said, just let me. He said, just let me. Just let me. Just let me. Just let me. I didn't want him to do it. Just let me. I want to show everybody. I want to show everybody that I am God. Everybody that I got. Look, he, he's already taking care of some things in your house. He's already taking care of some things in your house. And he's going to send you the help that you need. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You lay in your bed praying and crying out to God. Hallelujah, Lord. He said, let me. Thank you, Lord. Thank he said, let me. Thank you, Lord. He said, you done done so Thank much you, for so long. Thank you, Lord. He said, let me. Thank you, Lord. He said, let me. Let me. He wants to take care of you. Thank you, Lord. He wants to take care of you. Thank you, Lord. He said, your latter days will be ready. You ain't got to sit back and worry about nothing. Worry about me. you have already did everything that he has told you to do. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And everything else that is undone, he's gonna say you're gonna get it right. Come on, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everything that's undone, he said, I'm giving you time to get everything right. That's right. You ain't even gotta worry about leaving here today or tomorrow because he's giving you time to get everything right. Don't, don't, don't even sit back and don't even sit in your bed, lay in your bed. Not another day. Not another day. Get up and start walking around your house and praying around your house and calling them things that are not as though they are. You begin to yes, you tell your yes, whole Lord. household, yes, claim your yes, whole Lord. household to be saved. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your whole household will be saved. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I was, I came out tonight and I had forgot my shoes, but I was already here earlier, and I was, I walked around the church, so it wasn't a mistake. I forgot my shoes. He said he was doing a new thing here. Yes, in this place. Yes, 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 yes. This place. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. This desolate place yes, has yes. now been called Holy Ground. Yes. Jesus. See, some people want to remember when. Yes. Well, thank you, Lord. Even though they're coming to the same address, this ain't the same building. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's a new management, yeah. new ownership. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 New ownership. Amen. Because mm -hmm. his spirit, his spirit has been welcomed back into this place. Amen. He says, "Now I can work." Amen. Now I can move. Yes. Yeah. Huh? Don't don't even worry about the things the past. So he's doing a refreshing in here. Yes, Lord. He's doing a renewing in here. Yes, Lord. Uh, he done did some renovation and some restoration and some filling in here. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Don't you walk in? Don't you feel it? There's a sweet spirit in here. Hmm? It's a difference. It's a difference. It's a difference. Minister Marcel, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God is doing a new thing. Amen. Minister Marcel, you know I'm obligated to make it be what it used to be. Amen. Minister Marcel. Amen. God is giving you instruction. God is giving you direction. He's even increasing the gifts. He's increasing the gifts. 
And there was a time. That's why the enemy used to fight you. So. There was a time when you dealt with so much insecurity and inferiority. But it wasn't to harm you. God allowed you to live through that and deal with that to keep you humble. Because he's raising you up. Thank you, Lord. And your confidence is in him. Amen. So you won't be like the other ones who get beside themselves. Come on, come on. Thank you, Lord. Because your confidence is in him. Because you know if God didn't do it, it wasn't going to get done. Amen. No doctor, no prescription. He has so much in store for you and your family. Thank you, Lord. And your family. Because even that is changing because he has made you the minister of your family. Thank you, Lord. Because it starts at home. Amen. Amen. And he's made you the minister of your home. Thank you, Lord. There's a great work in this place. The revival had to come. The time of refreshing. Thank you, Lord. It's, not, it's not strange that you have to open up the doors and even though nobody's here, that you come in here and you still come to the altar and pray. Thank you, Jesus. You gotta pray. Thank you, Lord. Because guess what? This is going to be a house of intercession. A house of intercession. And because of this house of intercession, we're going to see things start changing just right here in your own community. We're going to continue to feed the people. Not just physical food, but spiritual food. Woman of God, your ministry has to come forth. Your ministry has yes. to come forth. Yes, Lord. See, because it's going to be between, because of these ministries Amen. that are established here, Amen. that's going to bring the people flooding in. Amen. But you have to get refreshed first. We had to heed the instructions first because before refreshing comes instruction. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Repent. Even repenting, sometimes we have to repent even because our slothfulness. Yes. Yes. Hmm? Yeah. Do you know why slothfulness is a sin? Because the whole time we're spending not doing anything, somebody's waiting on us. Somebody's waiting on us. See, while we was laid up, they talk about what we didn't feel like doing, what we didn't have the energy to do it. Some mother was crying because her child didn't have no food to eat. Our slowness. Maybe somebody told that young man that we don't we don't have an appointment for you until next week. Oh, yeah, oh, we know you're suicidal, but we ain't got no room in Peace River for you. Or we gotta take you through all this red tape and all this other stuff. We gotta meet all these other criteria. But it's us. Because see, because I dealt with the spirit of depression, I know what it looked like when I see it. Because I had the spirit of suicide on me for so many years, so I know what it looks like when I see it. It goes outward. This is revival. 
you're reviving the men and the women of God to, to get back in a place where you can begin to make a move. Amen. So we can see that the Spirit of God is going to be manifested in this world, in this cold, cold world. We can't, we cannot continue to wax cold just like the world. Come on, man. Thank you, Lord. Ask God for his all-consuming fire. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. See, one thing about that consuming fire, one thing about fire, when you put fire on wax, it begins to melt. Yeah, Consume me, oh God. Consume me, oh God. On your feet, everybody. Father God, we just thank you right now, Father God, for giving us another opportunity, oh God. Another opportunity to get it right, oh God. Father God, we thank you for this time of refreshing, oh God. Father God, we thank you for this time of examination, oh God. Father God, we ask that anything, Father God, that is not like you, Father God, that you begin to purge us, oh God. Purge us for God of all things, Father God, for all sins, oh God. Father God, we just ask you, Father God, to look over our families, oh God. Father God, we're asking you right now, Father God, to search our hearts, oh God. Father God, make us more like you, Father God. Create in us, oh God, a new spirit, oh God. Oh God, we just thank you right now for your Holy Ghost, oh God. We thank you for your indwelling, oh God. Oh Father God, we thank you for saturating this place, oh God. And right now, Father God, we thank you for the healing that has taken place tonight, oh God. Oh Father God, let us not leave this place the same way we came, oh God. Oh Father God, let us do the work, oh God. Oh Father God, let us seek you, oh God, while you still may be found, oh God. Oh Father God, blot out all of our sins and unrighteousness, oh God. Oh Father God, we thank you right now, oh God. We give you praise right now, oh God. Oh God, just, oh God, thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. He said there's widows. Mm, Jesus. He said there's widows. He's given us work to do. Oh God. He said there's widows. And someone he's given the ministry of widows. In the name of Jesus. He's given someone a ministry of widows. Mm -hmm. We ain't on our jobs, people. We ain't on our jobs. Whatever ministry is in you right now, we ask that God stir it up tonight. We ask that God stir it up tonight. Don't leave here the same. Don't leave here the same. As a matter of fact, don't leave here without your work undone. Jesus. Jesus. I gave you the ministry of widows. He said, there's so many widows that are out here and they need our support. God gave it. He, he told us that in the word that was our responsibility. Yes, he did. Yes, he, did. he told us in the word. And that wasn't even one of the wow. things that I read. So wow, wow, wow. You, it's in the house. Yeah. And if he, if you, and, and I don't know who he's talking to, but guess what? In the word, it said it was all of our responsibility. It's all of our responsibility. Amen. Wow. It's all of our responsibility, but there's some widows right now who are barely making it on their social security. Absolutely. They're barely making ends meet. If they pay their bills, they don't have money for food. And if they buy food, then they risk not having all the money for, for other bills. 
Like even, even right now, I'm here, God's talking about life insurance policies. People don't even have burial insurance. And they worried about that. something even happened to them. Even though they ain't even gonna know nothing about it. Amen. But they worry that if something happened to them, how they going? The charge to keep I have. And a God to glorify. We have a church. We revived. And in the church, we blessed.